being a relatively new vegan, having these meat and cheese alternatives that are so close to the real thing makes the transition a lot easier. Vegan cooking does not have to cost you a lot of money. I need to make some ricotta. I need to use something more inexpensive than cashews. The only other thing I can really think of is tofu. I'm going to add one and a half blocks of extra firm tofu to the food processor. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, some nutritional yeast to help give it a cheesy flavor, of course. A little bit of garlic. I'm just gonna go with some dried basil instead, and then I'm gonna use some salt and some pepper, and then we're just gonna blend it up. Now it is time to make our meat sauce. So I'm gonna start by adding olive oil to a big old pot, and then I'm gonna start sauteing an onion. I'm gonna add in my garlic. I'm gonna do a little pinch of salt in here. So for my meat, I'm using white button mushrooms and my eggplant. Eggplants are pretty cheap too. So this is gonna be our nice meaty texture we're adding to the lasagna. I wanna let it cook down for about 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna add some seasonings. I'm going to do a tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce, just so we can get a little bit of that umami flavor going. And then we're gonna do a whole tablespoon of Italian seasoning. A little more salt and pepper, kind of feeling it out. Wine, which was a $2.99 bottle. Okay, so this is looking super meaty, and now it's time to just add in some tomato sauce. I'm just using a jar of tomato sauce. We're living life cheap. And now I'm just gonna let this cook for about 20 or so minutes, and then we can assemble. First, I'm gonna add a little more sauce to the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to add some noodles, some of our tofu ricotta mixture, a little bit of our meat mixture. Oh man, this looks so good. <laughs> and now we're just gonna cover the top with a little more of our pasta sauce. Who needs vegan cheese when we have dried basil? I'm gonna sprinkle on a little bit of this, ooh, gourmet. I'm gonna cover it with some aluminum foil and then I'm gonna bake it for 25 minutes at 375. We're gonna uncover it and bake it for another five minutes and then we'll be done. You did an incredible job. It is almost impossible to find a really good vegan lasagna for $14 in LA. One serving. You made a whole pan. Is there eggplant in here? Mmm, a planto de egg. I love the mushroom. I think the eggplant is cooked perfectly. It's soft. This tastes like ricotta. I love the filling. That's what Pop Pop likes. Well, Pop Pop has spoken. Roast some garlic. And by roasting this, we're gonna concentrate the delicious flavor of the garlic to give it that really powerful, robust, garlicky goodness that I think will take our mac and cheese to the next level. Pop your little top hat back on there, and then we're gonna just wrap it up. Now I'm just gonna pop this in the oven, and I have the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 200 degrees Celsius and we're gonna let it roast for about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, so now we're gonna make our own oat milk. I'm always telling people there's no reason for you to go buy it yourself at a store. It's so easy to make and oats are cheap. Not only does it have less of a carbon footprint than traditional milk, dairy milk, but also a lower carbon footprint than like cashew milk or almond milk. All right, so I have a half a cup of oats in there. Now I'm gonna add two cups of water. Now we're gonna blend this up. Now we are going to strain this out. Ideally, if you can, it's great to use like a really thin cloth, even a cheesecloth, so it's as smooth as possible. Look at all this stuff we got out of there, just on the first go. And it's perfect for this recipe, because we only have $3, which is insane. Now what we're gonna do is saute up some shallots. And the reason I'm using shallot instead of just a traditional onion is because shallot has more of an oniony, garlicky flavor. I know what you're thinking, we already have garlic. But listen, garlic that's been roasted tastes differently than garlic that's been sauteed. So we wanna get as much flavor in this mac and cheese as we possibly can. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt as well. Okay, so now we're gonna add our shallots to the blender and it's time to make our sauce. All right, we've got our little roasted garlic bulb here. We're gonna just squeeze. Whoa! It's so satisfying. And then we're gonna add it to our blender. 
I've got a roasted red pepper here. I'm just gonna use half of it. And what that is gonna do is add some more really great, punchy, powerful flavor, and also will add a nice color to our sauce. We're gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric, a half a teaspoon of paprika, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. This is what's gonna give us the cheesy flavor. One and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, and this is gonna help thicken our sauce up once it's in the pan. One teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of vegetable broth, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of tomato paste, and finally, we have our oat milk. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in there. All right, now let's blend all of these ingredients together. Okay. Woo, wow. There is a conversation going on in there. I interrupted. All right, and this is our final step. We are going to add our mixture to a pot. And don't worry if it looks thin because as we have this over the heat, we're gonna mix it for about five minutes or so and that will thicken it up. The cornstarch will be our thickening agent and will activate with the heat. And you wanna bring this to a boil and once it starts boiling, we're gonna turn it back down. All right, this is looking fantastic. Back of the spoon is coated. Now we're just gonna add in our pasta. I decided to go with a classic elbow mac and cheese because I think this, this cheaper pasta is probably gonna be more of the kind of like boxed mac and cheese feel. Oh yeah, coat that elbow mac and cheese. All right, this is looking heavenly to say the least. Oh, this smells so good. I haven't had mac and cheese in a long time too. I'm gonna try this one. Mmm. I made some baked banana oatmeal. First, I added some ripe bananas to a mixing bowl and then just mashed them up until they were in a smooth consistency. Then for my dry ingredients, I added some rolled oats, salt, baking powder, cinnamon, and a little bit of nutmeg and then mixed it up. I chose to make this recipe because bananas and oats are some of the cheapest ingredients I could think of and they're both really healthy breakfast foods. Then I added two flax eggs, some maple syrup, coconut oil, and vanilla extract. Then I added in some non-dairy milk and mixed it all together until it formed this liquidy consistency. And I didn't have an eight by eight baking dish, so I just made do with these two loaf pans I had. And then I just baked them off at 350 for about 35 minutes. Then I decided I wanted to drizzle some sunflower seed butter on top, but buying that in the store is expensive. And since sunflower seeds are really cheap to buy in bulk, I decided to make my own. So I just blended up some sunflower seeds until they turned into a powder. And then I added in a little bit of maple syrup for some sweetness, sunflower seed oil to help smooth it out, and a pinch of salt. And then I just kept blending that for a long time and eventually it turned into this smooth and creamy consistency. I'm not a huge fan of oatmeal, but I love baking it because it kind of turns into the texture of granola bars and it just tastes so much better, especially with the sunflower seed butter drizzled on top. This turned out to be a very inexpensive, delicious and filling breakfast. I made a vegan chickpea scramble. All right, first what you're gonna do, you're gonna add to you a cup of chickpea flour and then some water then some aquafaba, that's the liquid reserve from the chickpeas and some nutritional yeast, turmeric, then you're gonna add some cumin, chili powder, sea salt, mm-hmm, black pepper, put it in there like that, and then you're gonna stir it around. Look at there, go, stir it. Then you're gonna put your, some coconut oil in your skillet, add some red onions, I love red onions, some garlic, then you're gonna stir it around. Look at that sizzle, look at that pop. Then you're gonna add some green bell peppers, and you're gonna stir it around. I love using a wooden spoon, some Roman tomatoes, add some Roman tomatoes, then it's gonna sizzle. Then you're gonna add your chickpea flour. Look at that formation right there. And you're gonna wait every two minutes to stir it around because you don't want it to stick to your skillet, but then also, you want it to dry out. Then you're gonna add some parsley. You can also add any other type of vegetables you want, or you can add some spicy sriracha sauce. Then that's gonna be really good. I made some zucchini and lentil fritters. So first I grated up some zucchini, and one tip to save money on buying fresh produce is to shop at your farmer's market. And if you go towards the end of the day, a lot of the time they'll reduce the price of produce because they're just trying to get rid of it before they leave for the day. And I've gotten some really great deals that way. Then I just transferred the zucchini to a dish towel and I squeezed out all of the excess water because I don't want that extra moisture in the fritters. Then to that same bowl, I added back in the zucchini, some red lentils, diced red onion, some all-purpose flour, salt, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and cayenne. 
The reason I chose to make these fritters is because red lentils and all-purpose flour are both some of the cheapest ingredients that I can think of, and they really fill you up for not a lot of money. Then I just formed the batter into these cute little patties, and I fried them in a little bit of sunflower seed oil for about four to five minutes on each side until they were nice and crispy. For the vegan sour cream, I added some soft tofu, lemon juice, a little bit of a neutral oil, and some salt, and then I just blended it up until it was smooth and creamy. I normally would use cashews to make vegan sour cream, but those were too expensive for my budget, so I went with tofu instead. And for under a dollar per serving, these fritters were so flavorful and delicious, and I would definitely make them again. I made a BLT using benevolent bacon, but I added arugula instead of lettuce, so that makes it a B. AT. What you're gonna do, you're gonna get you a cast iron skillet and put a little coconut oil in there and add to about, you know, four to six pieces of the, the vegan bacon. And you're gonna get it crispy and brown on each side, just like that. Look at there, you see how crispy it is? And then I get some wheat bread and I add me some vegan mayo to each side of the bread because I like vegan mayo. And then add you some fresh tomato. See, I actually got these out of my garden. You're gonna put about three pieces of bacon on each side and that adds up to about a uh, dollar and 50. So this is a really good, tasty lunch. And also just think about if you go to a restaurant, this will cost you about $12. And who wants to spend $12? Uh, not me, when you can make you a B-A-T at home. How about that? I made some hearty vegan chili. I decided to use dried beans in this chili because they were the cheapest option. Where I live, I can usually find a can of beans for about a dollar but I realized I can make the same amount of beans when I use dried for about half the price. I just let those cook for about an hour and then they were ready to go. Then to a big pot, I added a little bit of oil and one diced yellow onion. And I just stirred that up until it was translucent. Then I added some minced garlic and I let that cook for a few more minutes. Then my spices, which were chili powder, cumin powder, paprika, salt, and a little bit of cayenne for some heat. Then I sauteed this again to activate the spices in the oil. Then I added in my beans from earlier and some fire roasted diced tomatoes. Then I added some frozen yellow corn because I love corn and it's cheap and some vegetable broth using some veggie bouillon. If you wanna make this even cheaper, you can make your own vegetable broth by saving up your vegetable peelings and then boiling and straining them. Then I brought this all to a boil, reduced it to a simmer and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Now normally I would add some baked and seasoned tofu crumbles to this chili, but I was trying to keep it to about a dollar per serving. So I decided to go with some TVP instead. TVP is just soy flour that's had the fat removed. And when you rehydrate it in a liquid, it has a great meaty texture. So I just let this cook for about another 15 minutes to let the crumbles fully rehydrate. And then I served it with some of that tofu sour cream from earlier. And it's a great example that vegan cooking does not have to cost you a lot of money. 